Hello, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. We're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and in discovering what you already know. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the Center, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit and means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin by affirming our vision and mission statements. The words can be seen on your screen. Please feel free to read aloud with me. First, our vision. Empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. And now our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life-affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow. We connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. And we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. And now as we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to relax, close your eyes, and focus on your breathing in this present moment. Settle into your inner stillness as Bob Teasdale sets the tone for us with a chant entitled, I Am Opening by Christy Snow. I am opening, 
I invite you to take these words inspired by Ernest Holmes, the architect of our philosophy, as your own. There is one loving presence that produces everything, nourishes everything, and maintains everything. It flows through and is in all things, being all that is. There is nothing outside it. This spiritual presence pervades the universe wells up in my consciousness and proclaims itself to be the source of my being. My recognition of life is God within me recognizing itself in everything I do. I know there is one mind, one spirit, one body, the mind, the spirit, and body of God, the universal wholeness, the ever-present good the all-sustaining life. Every organ, every function, and every action and reaction of my body is in harmony with the divine creative spirit. I now seek to realize the significance of this one mind and this one body. I now become aware that the one mind is acting through my body in accord with his own divine perfection, peace, and harmony. The divine circulates through me automatically, freely. Every atom of my being is animated by its action. I know that at all times I have a silent, invisible partner, an inner genius walking with me, talking with me, operating through me. Continuously, I keep my mind open to its guidance to its inspiration and illumination. With heartfelt gratitude, I accept this as my truth and release any resistance to it. With complete confidence, I release my word into the law of good, knowing it is already perfectly accomplished and complete. And so it is. Our spiritual leader, Reverend Karen Wolfson, is on a much-deserved sabbatical for the month of August. So today, the message is part two of a special encore presentation of Reverend Karen's three-part series entitled, Your Inner Genius. But before we hear from Reverend Karen, I'm pleased to welcome back Bob Teasdale to sing Move in the Direction of Your Dreams by Michael Gott. Welcome, Bob. Don't you think you owe it to yourself To look inside of you And take the time to realize What you are here to do Don't you think the time has finally come To 
stand and face the fire to walk into the blazing sun and claim your heart's desire you were placed upon this earth with a mission to complete now the time has come to stand up strong and claim your destiny you must move Of your dreams Do you think that you're not good enough To be a shining star Do you think because the road looks tough That you won't get that far Do you believe that only some are great And others left a chance Or maybe that it's just too late A futile circumstance You were placed upon this earth With a mission to complete And now the time has come To stand up strong And claim your destiny You must move in the direction of your direction of your dreams and when the world feels like it's crashing crashing all around you and the clouds of doubt are darkening your day well then just be still and know that there's something deep within you that will always of your dreams. Thank you, Bob Teasdale, for that beautiful song written by Michael Gott. And listen to the words of that song again, some of them. Don't you think you owe it to yourself to look inside, to take the time to realize what you are here to do? Don't you think the time has finally come to walk into the blazing sun and claim your heart's desire? You were placed upon this earth with a mission to complete, and now the time has come. So stand up strong and claim your destiny. Move in the direction of your dreams and act as if they've already come true. For even when there is no hope, or so it seems, move in the direction of your dreams. Do you think that you're not good enough to be a shining star or... Do you think because the road looks tough that you won't get that far? Do you believe that only some are great and others left for chance? Or maybe that it's just too late? <laughs> you must move in the direction of your dreams and act as if they've already come true. When the world feels like it's crashing all around you and the clouds of doubt are darkening your day, well then, just be still and know 
that there's something deep within you that will always know the way. Move in the direction of your dreams. Oh, I'm telling you, that clear, powerful message is all about your infinite creative genius. But more about that in a moment. Let's check in first. It's been a year this month since we started meeting in this way. Believe me, I am so happy knowing you are there even though I can't see you. <laughs> but each one of you know that. You know, I think about you all the time and I ask the question in my mind in some way, you know, how are they doing? How are you doing? I know this has been a really difficult and challenging time for many of you. And I know that many of you have gotten through this time with many blessings. But how are you? You can let me know with a quick email, you know. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live, we enjoy your letting us know where you are and the comments you leave. I love, I love when you let me know you're out there. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you have been an essentially, an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message and our caring and our connection. And we'll continue doing this for the next several months. So thank you for standing by us. And thank you all for joining with us today. As I think of you, I continue to affirm and see you as vibrantly healthy and abundantly supported in every way. So my theme for the month of March is your infinite creative genius, or I expanded on that to make a point, your infinite inner, irresistible, creative genius. So here's a question. Do you think of yourself as a genius? Maybe once in a while? <laughs> Just what is your infinite, inner, irresistible, creative genius? How does it show up and how can you rediscover it? Well, that's our theme for the month. And last week we started uh, by talking about it as this, um, this something that we all have, this amazing inner genius. It is the sweet spot of your unique essence. It's at the core of your being. You were born with it. It's where your dreams, as in the song, those dreams originate. Now, two weeks ago, Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones spoke about your redefining moments along your life's journey of becoming who you were born to be. That spark of life you were from the moment you were born and how those redefining moments reveal your inner genius. The author Gay Hendricks calls this your zone of genius in his book titled The Big Leap. And that book is about taking the leap into living from your inner genius. And he writes that your zone of genius is who you and only you really are. Behind your labels, behind that identity you may have adopted based on who people told you you are, it's your vibrant vitality, your divine self, God, the infinite, expressing life as your creative genius. And it's so important to remember, this experience of living from your inner creative genius is available every day, in every situation, every encounter, big or small. Remember, in God, there is no big or small. Here's the whole thing summed up by Ernest Holmes, the architect of our philosophy. He wrote, everything in the universe is a unique individualization or expression of the one thing that is the cause of all things. Talking about God, by right? Whatever name. And he continues, he says, this means that every event in the finite has an infinite possibility behind it. And we can link all of this with our everyday actions. So, and he continues, and this is such good news. We do not have to imitate. We do not have to compete. All we have to do is be ourselves and realize that the one self expressing itself as each of us in a unique way is infinite. It is limitless. as Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones called it, the itch that won't go away. I love that, the itch that won't go away because it does feel like that. Because you are hardwired to express this. 
You can run, but you can't hide from the urge to be who you were born to be, to express your inner, infinite, irresistible, creative genius. Just the other day, I heard an interview with a young woman named Jessica Zweig. She's the founder of a personal branding agency and has been called a personal branding ex expert by Forbes magazine. Now, branding to me has always meant it was kind of a contrived thing, devising a, some sort of an image, and it may or may not be authentic. Now, I, branding has a place, but you know, it all it often seemed very manufactured to me, for lack of a better word. Well, Jessica's branding agency is unique. It's called Simply B. And she told the interviewer that it was formed out of her belief that effective personal branding is not about projecting an image so much as it is about, listen to this, being profoundly, deeply connected to your assignment here on planet Earth and then making that your brand with the intention of making this world a better place. Amen to that. To me, that is expressing your inner creative genius. And it can be done in countless ways, as Holmes said, in your everyday activities, big and small. Now, here's another way of uh, describing your inner infinite creative genius. It is your dharma. Recently, I received a wonderful book from a member. It's uh, one of our members, and the book is titled Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. And in it, he talks about dharma, and he says it is a Sanskrit term that can't be defined by a single English word, though we could say it's sort of like your calling. If you say uh, your dharma is your calling, you're coming close. When your natural talents and passions connect with what the universe needs, and then that becomes your purpose, he says you are living in your dharma. Basically, he says you're accomplishing two things or you're expressing two things living in your dharma. One, you're joyfully using your best abilities, and two, you're doing something that matters to the world. Well, that sounds like Jessica's branding philosophy, too. And that author then describes the feeling of living your dharma, living your creative genius. And the feeling, to me, I think that is the key. That's the key to tuning into what it is and seeing if you're on track with it. So he described the feeling as you feel alive, you feel a calm, confident satisfaction. Often you feel the thrill of joy and excitement. You feel vibrant, you feel connected. A light comes on. And he, reads, he writes also, you also feel in the flow. There's a natural momentum. You feel like you're in your lane, swimming with the current instead of struggling and resisting. I think you know what that feeling is. Well, that is tapping into your inner genius. You feel aligned. You come out of your own head and you lose track of time. In short, it just feels right. You know that feeling? It just feels right. And he reminds us, your dharma is passion and purpose in the service of others. So I like that because it reminds us that to live from your inner infinite creative genius, your dharma, could seem self-absorbed, but actually, it is your gift to the uplifting of the world. So, as wonderful as it is, and as supported by the infinite as it is, isn't it interesting that although your inner genius, your true God-created self, totally, is so, totally supported by the infinite, as I said, that things can get in the way of its shining full out, speak for myself. I'm not always living from my um, <clears throat> inner genius. I do get distracted and I slip into letting things limit me. Well, Ernest Holmes reminded me, I guess I'm not alone. He said that while continually, he continually tells us that this infinite resource, God, is without limits, he points out that we are limited not by the principle, but by our inability to see its perfection. Gay Hendricks calls this bumping into your upper limit problem. He calls it your ulp, rhymes with gulp, <laughs> U-L-P, upper limit problem. I think you get the idea. But it kind of can feel that way. You're going along just really in the flow, in the moment, feeling, you know, I'm on 
on, on track with my genius. And then thought, something happens the way you think, something in how you perceive something, and you all of a sudden it's not there. It's kind of like, and, and it feels like, oh, <laughs> it's kind of like a glass ceiling we have made of out of um, conscious and subconscious limiting messages about ourselves. And here's the thing, behind all of these thoughts and feelings is one fundamental problem. It's a belief in separation. It's a belief that we are in this alone, that we're separate from our good and separate from the source of all of that good, life, God. And being in that belief, in that place, that's frightening. Well, Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, also wrote a book called The Big Magic. And that book is quite parallel and compatible with principles that we teach here. But she writes about this fear, and she says this, your fear will always be triggered by your creativity. And I'm going to say by your creative inner genius, because creativity asks, asks you to enter into realms of uncertain outcomes. And fear hates uncertain outcomes. Your fear, she writes, is programmed by evolution to be hypervigilant and insanely overprotective. So it will always assume that any uncertain outcome is destined for a horrible disaster. And she has a unique way of explaining this. She said, basically, your fear is like a mall cop who thinks he's a Navy SEAL who hasn't slept in days and is all hopped up on Red Bull and he's liable to shoot at his own shadow in an absurd effort to keep everyone <laughs> safe. Uh, let me add, this is not to cast a negative shadow on mall cops or Navy SEALs or Red Bull. They all have their place. But this sure does describe those fears. I can relate. Can you? But she has some great advice about that. She says, I don't try to kill off my fear. I don't go to war against it. Instead, I make space for it. I allow my fear to live and breathe and stretch out its legs comfortably. The less I fight my fear, the less it fights back. If I can relax, well, fear relaxes too. And she tells a story, sort of an example. <laughs> she calls it the road trip. See if you can relate to this. She says, I even have a welcoming speech prepared for fear, which I deliver right before embarking upon any new creative genius product. And it goes something like this. Dearest fear, creativity, my genius, and I are about to go on a road trip together. I understand you'll be joining us because, well, you always do. I acknowledge that you believe you have an important job to do in my life and that you take your job seriously. Apparently, your job is to induce complete panic whenever I'm about to do anything genius or creative or interesting. And may I say, you are superb at your job. But I and my inner creative genius will also be doing our job on this road trip. There is plenty of room in this vehicle for all of us, so make yourself at home. But understand that creativity and I are the only ones who will, who will be making decisions along the way. I respect that you are part of this journey, but your suggestions will not be followed. You're allowed to have a seat and maybe a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. You're not allowed to touch the road maps, suggest detours, fiddle with the temperature. Dude, you're not even allowed to touch the radio. And above all, my old familiar companion, you are absolutely forbidden to drive. And then she says, we head off together, me, my inner creative genius and fear side by side, advancing into the terrifying but marvelous terrain of creative unknown outcomes. <laughs> Don't you love that? I do, I love it. And I have tried that, you know, talking to my fear saying, all right, I know you're there. Ride along on my shoulder if you want to, but you are not the boss of me. So take that with you this week as you continue to discover and live from your inner genius. And just see where it leads you. 
And as your inner genius inspires you to navigate new territory, remember these words from Dennis Merritt Jones. He said, even if you're uncertain that you can make the journey, your inner explorer knows the way. Know that you cannot get away from this one infinite intelligence Wherever you may go, there, right beside you, waiting to be used, is all the power of the universe. Your inner, infinite, irresistible, creative genius, it's yours. It's yours alone. And no one can take it away from you. As Bob is going to sing that wonderful Gaither gospel song, The world didn't give it to me, so the world can't take it away. So go out there this week and move in the direction of your dreams, your inner, infinite, irresistible, creative genius. And I'll see you next week. Thank you, Bob, for completing Reverend Karen's inspiring message so perfectly. 
Now, as we move into our time of offering, I want to let you know that here at the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota, we're available to support you in knowing the power and presence of your spiritual essence. We offer prayer support, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual community and connection. And we're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to support you. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the Donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card. Or you can mail a check to our address. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it. And know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper and the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. Now, please join me in our offering affirmation on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. Do you need prayer support? If so, I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request. Our four licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Ron Frost, Nicole Leeds, and me, are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. We're also available for one-hour spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. These sessions offer the opportunity to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of the spiritual truth that transcends your problem or challenge. For more information, check our website under the staff link at the left side of the screen and then select practitioners. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter. Please also check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events. I just have one announcement for you. Our Spiritual Living Circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. to discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. This is a no-cost opportunity to more fully explore your own spiritual development by connecting with and learning from other like-minded individuals. This week, we'll be discussing the article by Diana Ensign entitled, Opening the Door to Inner Guidance. If you'd like to participate, please email me at the address shown on your screen, and I'll send you the conference invitation along with the article and discussion guide. Now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into the week ahead with the awareness that we all have an inner genius inspiring us into new and more expanded expressions of ourselves. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. With every breath 
I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with